Welcome, everybody. Welcome to a new Human Experience podcast. Today is April the 28th, 2022. The topic for this evening is innate wealth. So um, I have been going through the wealth series from Jason Estes. And Jason Estes has a YouTube channel. And his YouTube channel is MTVO team. And if you go to the MTVO team and look under playlists, there is one called the Wealth Series. And this one is number four. The original title is What It Means to Be Wealthy. I am really so grateful that um, I am going through the Wealth Series because I have learned so much. This is the fourth video that I'm, I've been going through and I really encourage each and every one of you, if you haven't already done so, is to actually go to his YouTube channel and um, go through some of those videos, as, as many as you, as, as you feel called to do so. And the reason why is I can just, the, just listening to her talk to him talking about wealth and his understanding of wealth and how he defines it how he he like all his his own experience of his own journey of to wealth is really unlocked a lot of riches i think and uh, unlocked a lot of misunderstanding on my part so that's why I really encourage that you each go and do your own due diligence to go to the original source material. I will talk about some of the, the main points here from my own understanding of it. However, my own understanding may not be exactly um, what Jason talks about or may not be exactly what you would um, understand because everyone is different. So we, we can only grasp the material from our own point of view. So this is really from my point of view, how I'm really understanding what wealth is. And from all my understanding, that's why I named the, the, the topic for this evening as innate wealth, because um, well, just to, to start off, there are a few um, terms that Jason kind of not really explained because he has explained some of those terms in the previous three videos. However, in video number four, he actually deepens and gives a lot more details on his understanding. And um, so one of the, the main explanation or deepening of understanding is the difference between rich and wealthy, being rich and being wealthy. So this is Jason Estes understanding, which may not be everyone else's understanding is just that this is how he has it in his mind for his own reasons, which, which I will um, talk more about. So what's the difference between rich and wealthy? So being rich is a temporary state. And I want, I, I'm going to use an example about money being all of a sudden um, being rich in money is a temporary state. So if you're rich in money, which means that you have a lot of money. So, so however, it's just a temporary state, which means that you, you haven't earned those money yet. You become, we you may have become rich because you won the lottery or you um, inherited a, a big sum of money. So that makes you temporarily rich. However, 
um, even though you, you have money um, and with that money, you can become wealthy if you use it. So the difference between rich and wealthy is that when it's rich, it's a temporary state. And the people that are not wealthy, they don't have a wealthy mindset. The way they, they handle money is that when they have a large sum of money, if they have not actually gained the maturity and the stability and also feel the worthiness to be able to hold on to this all of a sudden this big sum of money the tendency is that they would try to give it away they they would like to um because they don't have the capacity they don't, they don't feel that they're worthy to hold that amount of money so because of that, that kind of um, insecurity and anxiety, because they have not grown their own capacity to hang on to that, that large amount of money. They have not um, developed the container to be able to handle that amount of, of money. So their their level of wealth is all of a sudden um, very different from the level of the money. So they feel this anxiety and they don't know what to do with it. And so they would create some incident to spend the money, to give away the money as quickly as it comes in. So, so that actually is how a lot of people who actually won the lottery behaved is that all of a sudden they have this amount, big amount of money and because they don't have the container to be able to use that big amount of money in a productive way. So they ended up, you know, um, just throwing it out or giving it to other people to, to, to buy the things that they like to consume, to buy things or buy people, buy, buy love, all of those things. So they would think of so many ways and the money somehow just find a way to um, just be out the window as quickly as it came in. So that's the difference between rich versus wealthy. When a person has actually grown that that capacity to be the container of a much larger amount of wealth, whether it is monetary wealth or other kind of resources, other kind of wealth, when the person has that capacity and container for it, then they would be able to be, to use the money that no matter what, amount even if it's a big amount because they know what to do with that big amount of money they won't actually be um, just throwing it out and passing it off to someone else like it is a hot potato they can actually invest the money um, in a very wise and an ethical way so that the money is is going to grow instead of um, being given up to who knows where and when. So the difference between rich versus wealthy. And another very important concept is poor versus wealthy. So poor is a state of mind. Poor, when you're poor, it does not mean not necessarily mean that you don't have money. A lot of people that have big sums of money, they may feel poor. Poor is, is really an energetic state. He, um, Jason mentioned that when someone is poor, you can think of that as being, um, it's like they are an energy vampire because they, they give off this, this vibe that they need things. 
they need attention from other people. They need other people to take care of them. They need other people to protect them. They need attention. They need love from other people. They need resources, money, time, and expertise. So they need, 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 want, want, want. So when you have that kind of mentality, then that is a poor, then, then you're poor because there is always this like energetic is that you try to suck the life out of someone else because you need it and you are the center of your own universe and you cannot think of other people you cannot um, put yourself in someone else's shoes it's all about me 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 give me your attention give me your love give me your money give me blah 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 give me give me give me give me that is a poor mentality that's no matter how much money you may have in your bank you are still poor so that is for him that's how he described poor and so versus so the the um juxtaposition is that so poor is you need you're not enough you're always trying to take it's, it's an, um, a form of energy vampirism so it could be you you may still want money from other people but mostly you want attention you want love you want all of the, the the primary resources so you lack those so that's what a poor mentality is. And the opposite is what wealthy is. When you're wealthy, you are enough. You may not have a lot of money in the bank, but you know you are enough. And you know that you have enough. And you have this innate wealth. You have this innate faith that whatever whenever you need money the money will show up so you have this faith and you just when you look at your life you just feel that yes um no i'm not living in uh, a castle but i don't need to live in a castle because wherever it is that i am i feel enough so there is this energy of enough you you don't really lack anything you have enough and you just have this stability this wholeness within your your energy field and that it's that actually is what well um that actually you know screams well or Scream may not be the, the right word for it, that in that you send out signals energetically that you have enough, you are enough. I am good wherever it is that I am. So that's what wealthy people are. Wealthy people are enough. They don't need to pretend to be someone else. They don't need to have a fancy car in order to feel good about themselves. They don't need to live in a fancy house. They don't need to have the right kind of friends or the, the, um, the right um, circle of friends. They just, who, um, no matter who they're with, they are always have this, give out that vibration that they're comfortable with who they are, where they are, and whatever it is that they have, they are enough. And he also introduced a concept that is called social equity. So let me just give a definition of social equity as social equity is really that you have a goodness, it's really the goodness factor. So when you when you feel when you 
are good and you do good things, not expecting anything in return and you are just being an honest, good person and you do this consistently and you are always this, this pillar of goodness, no matter who's looking or not looking. So when you have this mentality and you, you, you be good and do good, you give out this vibe that is that people notice in you and people want to help you because they can feel that you have this 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 um, righteousness within you that is just you don't have to you don't have to claim it. You just exude that because of who you are. You're always willing to help people. You um, you just are good at doing the right thing at the right time, saying the right thing at the right time, and just um, be respectful for whomever it is that comes into your life. So that really is what social equity is. And the importance of, of building this social equity is that we um, are here. That's what we are here for. We are here on earth at this time, especially this time, this time when the old energy is fading and we are the, all of us who are here on earth right now we are here to build a bridge, to find a new way to build a society that is very different from the old. Because the old society is kind of built on the idea of um, a fake wealthy. So what do I mean by fake wealthy is that people is, is actually poor. They're poor in spirit. But they, they have this, because they're poor in spirit, so they have all these wrong ideas about what um, wealth really means. So they have this idea that wealth means you have a big house, you have to be uh, a doctor or um, a, a lawyer, all those things. So those are all wrong ideas. Wealthy just simply means that you are enough. You're a good person. And you live that and embody that. You, you're just innately who you truly are. That's what being wealthy is. When we, because we misunderstood what wealth truly means. And we actually think that um, a lot of people who are actually poor, we think that they are wealthy because they have money. Hey, they have money, which is very much based on survival. Um, in society, is you know, yeah, we have to survive. We so instead of doing things because it is right, we do things because it is easy because it kind of we do things out of fear rather than do things out of integrity so and because there are so many people that worships monetary wealth that we actually miss the point and we we worship people that are big wealthy they they actually are they want attention they yes sure they can sell they can they can sell you anything they can make money but no matter how much money they have though are they happy are they um do they actually have this innate goodness in them a lot of the times they don't they miss the fact they think that they need the attention, they need the money because they have this need, need, need mentality. They don't, 
don't they really don't know how to develop this innate well within themselves so just looking at um and listening to what jason mentioned what really struck me is that being wealthy is actually just being ourselves and knowing that just being ourselves is enough like for me that really is my big tick um, tick away is just just being me is enough just being our true self is enough that we don't actually have to buy love we don't actually have to um be a people pleaser because i know i i'm very good at being a people pleaser i'm very good or i i actually a lot of the times i would spend money in order to like with the idea of buying love so been there done that and i know what that that feels like is a feeling of not enough so when i heard that you know when when you're wealthy when you truly can embody and um have that capacity then it really is this understanding that you are enough whomever you are wherever you are you are enough you may not be the most wealthy person yet however wherever you're at just know that wherever you may be at in that continuum between being poor and being wealthy wherever it is you're at is simply perfect one of the tools that he kind of gave us is this idea of incremental um this, this idea of incremental growth so let me actually um let me just bring up this next one this is how he present incremental growth how do we get from being poor to being wealthy so this idea of incremental growth so each week so let's say um every thursday you do this so you would kind of on a a continuum between poor which is you are you know zero on the wealthy scale to 100% so just just find where you feel you're at in this like today in this moment where do you feel you're at let's say i feel i am here no matter where you feel you're at make it be okay don't make it be oh i'm bad i should be ashamed of myself no you are where you're at and you can start wherever you are at you start to grow your own wealth there's nothing to be ashamed of just know where you're at um and know that you don't have to be 100% correct some days you may feel like even maybe next week i may feel that i'm here but this week this is where i feel i am so when you kind of know where you are find out where you feel you are and then you just make a plan so how can i grow myself how can i grow my my wealth and then this idea of social equity equity comes in because we are here to build a bridge from the old energy to the new energy so what can i do because i know that i i choose i i i choose to be here i'm not here by accident so i i'm here on earth because for whatever reason my soul wants me to be here so i chose here so 
And I, because I, I'm here, I just know that I am good enough to be here. So I'm here, what can I do? What can I do to improve myself, to be a force for goodness for the people around me and also a force for goodness for the world? What can I do? So don't make it, it does not have to be like a, this big project, this multi-million dollar big project. Um, if, if I have um, a few million dollars or if I can find somebody to invest in a few million dollars, great. Maybe one day I'll get there. But for this week, I, I don't feel that I can do that yet. So feel what it is that you can do this week that will grow your sense of, well, to grow your own social equity. So for myself, this is, for example, I can say, okay, this week I'm going to commit to meditating at least 30 minutes every day. And I'm going to continue to watch the Wealth series because I want to learn from somebody who is most likely further along the wealth line than, than I am at this moment. So I want to learn from someone else who has really put thought on this subject. And the other things I can do is really check in with my body to see how I feel about my own worthiness, about my own wealthy um, in this as well. And I also want to process fear as it shows up. And how can I help my, the, the people around me? So I check in with them. I talk to them. I may text them. And also, um, I'm famous for being hard to get a hold of. So one of the things that I started doing is to actually keep my phone on. Because a lot of the times, I would, um, I would, I would not keep my phone on or even if I have my phone on I would have the the wi-fi off um, the my my phone would be on airplane mode however for this week I'm going to make sure that my phone is not on uh, airplane mode and I have my wi-fi on so that people around me who actually needed me or wanted to to talk to me, they'll be able to reach me somehow, some way. And also I'm gonna share my understanding and also I'm gonna include them, them in my meditations. For example, this is what I, this is my plan for being this, a source of goodness for the people around me and for the world. So today I'm gonna, this week I'm gonna smile to other people and I can also say, okay, I'm going to go out no matter where I go, even on subway, I'm not going to wear any mask so that, you know, when I smile at them, they will actually be able to see my smile. Or I can also put in that I'm going to um, share meditation. I'm going to be a conscious portal for positive energies to come through me because one of my job is to be a portal. So that I consciously um, be that portal for positive energies to come through me. So, so I will make my plan and you can make your own plans. Just start what, start wherever it is, wherever you are, it's fine. Um, just know where you are on this, this continuum, this, this spectrum between poor and wealthy know where you are and then make a plan to improve and to grow your own wealth. And if you do this every week, and so next week when I come and do this again, at some point in this, I would start to feel that I'm worthy to be, let's say in the middle. Like at this, at some point I may, be even a little bit more beyond the middle. So 
that is how we can grow incrementally is to know where we are and then just make a very simple plan on how we can grow our own um, the goodness within ourselves and how to be a container or hold the space for the people around me to also be able to be a better container for their own wealth and also for the world as well. So, so this idea of incremental growth. And that's how we can get from being in a poor mentality of, of um, being a people pleaser or needing other um, needing attention, needing love, needing need, 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 all that to shift ourselves bit by bit on this continuum. And how we can also um, grow is to ask ourselves, are we having fun? Are we really enjoying life? Because when we are truly who we be, we embody our true essence. Our true essence is really joy, light, love. We should feel happy. We, we would naturally feel this ease within ourselves. And when we ask ourselves, do I feel this, this sense of wellness, the sense of enjoyment, quiet enjoyment in our life? And we, our answer is no, not yet. So why, why, why not? A lot of the times when we start to ask why, what is holding us up? If you really dig deep enough, there is actually just one reason, just very simple. It always goes back to just one reason. There's one reason is really fear. Fear, fear that I'm not good enough, fear that I'm not worthy because if I am who I am, if I actually say what's on my mind, I may upset other people. People are going to, other people may be, mad at me and I don't want other people to be mad at me I guess that's my fear and this is and and this is my conversation in my own mind so I know that this is very true as a lot of times I don't speak up is because um either I'm afraid that I'm going to be wrong or I'm afraid that I'm going to upset other people because I dare to speak my own mind so fear a lot of it's is really if you find that you are not wealthy, if you find you're not wealthy and you're not worthy of claiming to be wealthy, then um, somewhere, if you just drill down enough, you will find that it's, it's fear. And it's all going back to fear so fear, 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 it's, and that's a good thing because um, fear is not real. Fear is not related to the world. It's, it's simply in our mind, uh, in our own mind, when we don't feel that we are worthy to embody, when we are not ready to embody who we truly are, we will somehow um, create all these anxiety, fear within ourselves to convince us that we're not there yet. So it's as um, as Jason mentioned that I actually I do feel I, that resonate as true to me. It's all fear, and it's a good thing because fear is not real. It's just in our mind. So all we have to do is simply face our fear. And we face our fear by knowing that it is just all in our mind. It's not real. And to activate bravery in ourselves. He, he puts it 
very bluntly. He puts it so bluntly, and I really love that. He, um, <laughs> he puts it so bluntly, is that, well, uh, the way he said it is, dude, you are on earth right now, and earth is not an easy place. It's not, it's, it's not an easy place to, to playground. It's not an easy playground. This is really the, um, one of the tougher playground to play in. So if you are on earth, you are brave. So you may not think you're brave. You may not claim your own bravery, but if you're here, you are brave. And he, he put it so bluntly that it is, it's, it's hilarious and it's also true as well. So that yes, we're here. We're here. We, ch we chose this absolutely crazy playground. And so whomever it is that, that actually chooses to be here right now is really brave. I mean, if we were picked to be here 50 years ago, we're still brave, but not as brave as when we pick now because we're in this transition. And, and you know, you could have, you know, waited another 20 years when you come back in 20 years. A lot of the things would be um, done already. It, it would be a much, it would be easier. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. It will be, it will be easier. But you pick now. So you are brave. You just have to claim your own bravery. So when you claim your own bravery, you start to not bow down to the fear, to that, to that, the the lie that you are afraid. You you have something to fear that you are not worthy to claim your who you be and just to be who you are. And yes, being brave may have um, its consequences because when you are brave and you embody who you are, you are definitely going to trigger other people who are not ready to, um, em to embody their own true self. There are still many people who wants to re remain in being poor and to live the fake wealthy lifestyle. So there are people who are like that and you're going to trigger them. And they're not gonna like you. They're gonna say things, they're gonna do things. They like things may have, like events may happen. So when, however, when you do the right thing, when you embody who you truly are, and you be who you truly are, and you do the right thing, not the easy thing, but the right thing, then the right things are going to happen. And when you work through whatever accusation or projections that other people put on you, when you work through that, then the next right thing will be put in front of you and then the next and then the next. And that's how the universe actually work is that yes, doing the right thing um, may not be the easy thing, but when you do the right thing, then the next right thing will be put in front of you. And that's how we grow ourselves. And that's how we grow from being a poor mentality to wealthy. Wealthy is simply owning who you are and being you completely, knowing that you are enough, knowing that you are good, you are brave, and you do the right things, even when it's not the easy thing. And hmm, I think I've kind of 
Um, oh, okay. Just just one more thing to one or two more things to to mention before I wrap up is that um, know that we are all here. We've all chose. We all chose to be here in this time because we are here to build a bridge from the old to the new. And just know that you are claim your own goodness, claim your own bravery, activate your own bravery, and then simply be open and ask yourself, what, what can I do in this week? What can I do in this month? And so on. And every day, do little bit by little bit. And also know that, yes, we are all here to build that bridge, but don't take on the weight of the whole world on your own shoulders, because it's not just you. Even though everybody is the center of their own world, however, we are all also part of team humanity as well. So if you feel that, oh, I'm here to do this, I'm here to, let's say, um, be the healer, let's say, be the healer, then know that it's, it's okay to fail and learn from that failure. Um, there will always be some people that is that you cannot heal. There will always be some clients that may choose to not make any change, no matter you know, what you do, how you assist them. They may not make any progress at all, but that does not mean that you are you. You see, I you know I'm not. I'm not good enough. That's why this person didn't heal or did not make any, you know, um, meaningful progress when when I do this energy work on them. However, what I've what has been shared with me is from other healer is that um, to think that you can heal anyone and everyone is really arrogance you may only be able to, maybe your job is simply to prepare that person so that the next person or the third person that, that comes along would be able to actually assist them to make a change. Just know that when you show up and be open to be of service and, and just do what is in front of you to do with that client in terms of healing and know that they have received that healing. And whether they decide to improve, whether they're, whatever it is, whatever issue that they come here for you to, to, to look at and to, to um, do some healing on them. It's not your job to make them change. Your job is to be of service to the best of your ability and prepare, prepare them for their next journey. So, so what I'm trying to say is that just because we are all, each and every one of us are here to build a bridge to be part of that. It does not mean that it is all on our shoulders. We are all here to do what is right in front of us to do. And if for whatever reason, um, I'm not able to process all my fear in order to step up right away, then someone else, who are a little bit further than, than I am, would be able to complete their part 
and when I am ready to process all my own fears and be able to show up for a particular experience, then it is my time. So all we have to do is do the right thing, no matter who is looking or not, and don't try to be something that we are not. Simply do the best we can to embody the who we truly are and to consciously grow our own wealth uh, within that we innately are wealthy. It is just that we have so many, um, I would say, false example to, to, to not know what is the right thing for, to do. So be willing to fail and be willing to, after we fail, to get back up and do the best we can to do what is right, what is the next right thing in front of us. And that's all we are here to do. And that's how we can incrementally grow ourselves from no matter where we are on this, this journey uh, from poor to being wealthy, no matter where we are, is to just be honest about where we are and start from where we are and just do just grow a little bit each day, each week. And that's all I have to say 